Hey guys, my name is Kelly Forster and I'm the president of USCDM. Hi, my name is Mary Brooks Wilson and I'm the vice president of community relations for USCDM. And we're super excited to be presenting for alumni engagement for all levels for you guys. We really hope that you find this uh, engaging and you learn something from it. I know we learned a lot this past year about alumni, so really just want to share that with you guys and hope that you can take it back to your programs. So here's our table of contents, and then we're just going to kind of review over this presentation. We're going to start with why is alumni engagement important, move into what a milestone year with alumni looks like, then some general best practices for every year, and then a Q&A at the end. So why should you engage your alumni? I find alumni to be the backbone of our organization. I, like Mary Brooks, I'm sure have leaned on alumni more times than I can count on a really hard push day, on a day when I got the biggest donation I've ever gotten ever, um, a random Wednesday afternoon when I was just feeling sappy about how much I loved and missed them. So your alumni are some of your biggest cheerleaders, arguably, and they're going to always be there to push you to make you your best. They're always going to be there to lend a helping hand, always there to give you that $1 donation pushover. Um, and they're they're just such a, a shining light at the end of the USCDM four years. I, um, um, unlike a lot of us seniors, we're going to quickly be approaching alumni land. And so it's super important that we keep our seniors engaged as they transition to alumni, keep them in that DM mindset. They were at one point, me and you, sitting here at these DMLC conferences, learning and engaging. And so they still have that love for DM in their hearts. They are still a hero at the end of it. And so I know just this past year, our alumni raised over $30,000. And big or small, $30,000 is a lot of money. So when you miss out on engaging on your alumni and talking to them, you're not only missing out on a large fundraising demographic, and database, but you're also missing out on the relationships that you could be building and the support you could have from them. So this past year was USCDM's 25th year, and so we really want to highlight what a milestone and anniversary year looks like in regards to alumni engagement, because I know we found a lot of really awesome best practices just this past year. So with it being a major milestone year, we placed a lot of emphasis on alumni. We really wanted to take what our alumni did 25, 25 years ago and bring it back to light and rediscover who USCDM is, why we started, and where we're going. And so with that, we discovered old pictures, awards. We worked to update contacts and find better ways to involve our alumni because we did find it such an important, important reason. Um, 25 years is no small feat, neither is five years. And so whether you're reaching a smaller milestone, maybe it's your 50th year, you can always find new ways to engage your alumni during these milestone years. They're arguably some of your biggest alumni years to do it. So a few things we discovered this past year was one of them was the Alumni Spirit Board Award. And so Mary Brooks is going to talk about our alumni board later on in this presentation, but this was a new award we introduced for our 25th year. It was special to our 25th year, and it really worked to bridge the gap between our current heroes and our alumni, just shining a light on some really awesome heroes that we found in the eyes of the alumni and our accomplishments that we've been doing this past year. We also rediscovered the William Eli Busby Award. William Eli Busby was a member of USCDM back in the founding and he was super passionate about USCDM. He always cared about it and loved it. And unfortunately, he did pass away from leukemia shortly after um, graduating college. And so we really worked to bring back this award because it got lost along the way. We reconnected with his family and his brother. And it was so special for us to highlight our highest fundraising hero or staff member um, through this award. We also used archived pictures. We got into the deep depths of our foundation basement and found a ton of news articles and pictures that we used for our communications and graphics throughout the year. And it really helps to bring back some memories that alumni maybe forgot they had. We brought back 
relationships that executive boards along the way had lost contact and they saw these pictures forgetting they existed and it rediscovered, reignited their, their love for USCDM and why they do it. And so we really utilized these these past year and I would really recommend that every program here, big or small, goes back. Find some fun pictures, videos, newspapers. You'll really surprise yourselves. We even found a song. You never know. You never know. Something else we did was alumni targeted fundraising pushes. So when we would do big fundraising pushes just within our organization, broader ones, we would also make a specific graphic for alumni that looks a little different than our big graphic. Same big idea, same overall fundraising push, but targeted towards what alumni can do. It was more peer-to-peer. -peer. It made a lot more sense for what alumni was doing and how they could fundraise because they don't always relate to what we're doing now. They're not in college anymore um, in the corporate world. So it's it's a little bit different of how they're going to engage their community. So um, definitely targeting things like, again, Mary Brooks talked about later, but incentive giveaways, things like that during these alumni fundraising pushes will allow them to engage more and just bring a bigger audience to what you're doing. So last year's numbers, we had 42 alumni registered for main event. We had over 30,000 raised through the alumni giving campaign. And then we had a little over a thousand raised through outside alumni peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And these numbers were more than we've ever had in years past. And so our belief is that if we can do this during a milestone year and where we establish so many new alumni practices, we can do this and grow on it for the upcoming years. This just lays such a great foundation for USCDM's alumni. And then things you can do, some takeaways. Dig into your archives. Like I said, you're going to find some awesome stuff that you can use for comms throughout the year, for incentives, for all kinds of really cool graphics. Really, really take them and run with them. Also look to introduce new awards or incentives. Those are something that we found to be super special, exclusive to our milestone year. And it can be something you can look back on and you really cherish. Also work on alumni targeted fundraising campaigns. Trying to do this every year, but especially on a milestone year is so important. They're going to engage with something that they can relate in. So work to be relatable and work to make something that they actually can use. And lastly, just try something new. Um, dig back into the box of old ideas that maybe threw out the door because they didn't work that year. Try them again. Re revisit some old ideas that were too outlandish for a year before now, but a milestone year is the time to really push the box and engage in new ways that you haven't done before. So making sure to try something new is crucial. All right, now we're going to jump into what alumni engagement looks like every other year. So maybe you're a program that this upcoming year is not a milestone for you. Um, so it's super important to still stay engaged um, throughout every year. And so here are some of our best practices that we um, hope to continue into our next um, years. And so first off is keeping track of your members after graduation. So um, of course, you keep track of who's in your program um, during their four years, but really keeping track after that graduation so that you know who, who was in your program, who built that legacy, and who can we reach out to when um, we do have big things to celebrate and when we do maybe need that $1 pushover um, to get to our next um, big fundraising goal. And so really keeping track of members is crucial. And so second is updating those contact lists. People may move different places, change their phone numbers, get new emails. Um, and so it's definitely important to stay contact, stay updated with them, keep their contacts updated. Um, so that way you know who you're contacting and that you have the right um, communication so that they are still in the know of what's going on after they've graduated. And then lastly is collecting um, those preferences on what postgrad involvement is going to look like for them. So this past year, we created a Google form for our alumni to fill out. So we sent that out to everyone that we did have contacts for and friends of friends um, so that we knew what they wanted to do when they um, graduated and how they could still stay involved as an alumni. And so here's some information that we had involved um, into our form so that we could keep track of that information. So current contact information, like I was talking about, the graduation year, just so you can keep track of who you're talking about, 
um, and um, really maybe you'll find some old alumni that um, haven't been involved in the past, but keeping up to date with those people that have graduated around the same year is really cool. Um, also keeping track of the positions that they held when they were in your dance marathon program. So last year, we even um, made it a point to reach out to those people that had your past positions. Um, so really keeping track of what did they do for the program? And that way, if you do have questions or there's special things that you want them to know that's been going on within your specific branch or committee, you can let them know. Um, and that's a part of that contact information. And so um, another thing is keeping current um, information on where they live and their current jobs. Maybe they have um, information for um, one of our current students to get a job after graduation. It's great to stay connected, always building that network um, of people to get jobs and um, keep up with the people that maybe are still living in the town or city that your school is in. And this past year, we even had an alumni that works at one of our local high schools in our area, and they reached out to start a mini marathon at their school. And so you never know what alumni are going to do who might have moved back to your college town. Um, so it's super important just to keep track of um, that information. And lastly, um, is just having that option for all of the alumni to fill out of how they want to stay engaged. So we kind of leveled those options um, of do you want to receive a newsletter monthly or do you want to receive individualized text about what's going on in your branch or committee? Do you want to give a donation or what is um, your donate or do you want to be a part of the fundraising pushes and also information about, you know, when our big events are and um, just information on everything um, that USC Dance Marathon is doing. And so some ways that we love keeping in, um, our alumni informed is through social media outlets. So we do have an alumni specific Instagram and that's a great place where we can throw in some flashback um, pictures and really you know, get those sentimental moments, remind people of those great memories that they had when they were in college and get to think back to what USC meant to them then and what it can mean for them now. Um, as well as just keeping them up to date with the big fundraising pushes that are going on and other things that are happening within our school and program. Additionally, our monthly newsletters um, are a little bit more of a um, format where it encompasses all of that information so that alumni have that at their hands and they can see you know, what's going on specifically in their branch. And these newsletters um, also highlight things that are happening in our Miracle families' lives and just kind of keeping up to date with them because they were really close to up with them when they were in college. So keeping up with them and their families post-grad um, is super important for a lot of them. And our LinkedIn is something that we found to be super important. So not only is it used through making those connections on a professional level, but also just keeping up to date with what is USC Dance Marathon doing um, at our school and how can um, that be beneficial for, um, you know, future employers to be looking at and that type of thing. And a lot of our alumni are on those networks. So keeping them up to date with what's happening is a super great way um, to do that. Last year, we brought back our hospital tours for all of our staff members. So a lot of the alumni were super excited to see when that was posted um, because of having to cancel those with the COVID pandemic. Um, it was really great to bring those back and have the alumni um, engaged in that aspect. And so I offered some communication um, examples of different things that we've done in the past and hope to continue doing every year. Um, so kind of leading up to your big events, whether that's a push push week or a push day or maybe your big main event, um, really texting those alumni and reaching out to tell them about what you've been working on, what um, your program has been doing, um, as well as asking them for that donation. So we have a... Um, just an Excel spreadsheet um, with that information of the past couple of years um, alumni and what they um, what their position was when they were in dance marathon in undergrad and just information about um, how we can contact them. And so I have an example of something that I sent to one of the past directors that um, had my old position just to give them an update about you know, what we were doing in um, my specific committee, but also, you know, how they could still support um, our program. 
And another thing that we offered was our donor drive link. So we had specific links to each of our board of directors and executive board members so that if alumni wanted to look back and donate to someone who's in now in their old position, um, they had super easy access to be able to donate in that way. And next, we um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our alumni board. So this board is super important, just keeping alumni engaged in some of that planning and having some alumni that want to stay super involved, um, being a little bit more hands on with our program. So our alumni board is um, it consists of about six to nine active alumni who assist in our planning and our outreach efforts to other alumni. So we work with them as our internal team and we have monthly meetings with them um, so that they help us with the with just the planning of how to keep alumni engaged. They know what's best. They know what um, their friends and other alumni, um, what their work schedules look like, what having a family looks like. And they really help us um, just figure out, you know, what's going to be best when we are considering alumni when making plans for our program. And they also have personal contacts to the people who were in the program while they were in school. So it's a super great way to just stay involved and stay in contact with those people from all ages. And our alumni board consists of people from some of our first years, 25 years ago, all the way through now. And it's super great to just see how your dance marathon program may have improved um, and just see the different aspects of what alumni wanna see from different generations and different groups in that way. And it really is a great way just to offer some mentorship for those current dance marathon leaders. Um, the alumni board are super great people and they just wanna help and support us any way they can. And so you may be asking, so why is this important? What exactly do they do? And so our alumni board really do assist us um, just with those general planning. They help us brainstorm ideas. Um, and it's super important just to have that connection with current alumni and have them involved with the outreach to other alumni, just to have a little bit more of a personal connection when you are reaching out to people. And so how do you create the board? Um, what, how is it built? What does that look like? Like I said, ours is about eight or nine people um, on our board right now. And um, we do have an application process. So um, our alumni that are interested in being a little bit more involved, we get that application and they can figure, fill out that information on what it's gonna mean for them and what's required um, from us to give to them. And um, it's a really great way. So if they wanna stay involved, they can, but we try to grab alumni from all different years. so. It, we do do that application process just so that we um, can keep up to date. And we also like to keep an alumni from some of the recent years just to keep some of those recent grads um, in, in the know and keep them engaged right after they've graduated. And so communication for us with the alumni board um, consists of our weekly meetings as well as we have a Slack um, messaging group message. And um, that's a great way we can just communicate with them to help schedule meetings and just last minute text and information and things like that. So the Slack information or the Slack messaging is definitely um, something we, we use a lot. And so here are some of our um, alumni best practices for every year where you really should um, get your alumni engaged and make it easy for them to come back to events. So when it comes time for your big main event, send personal invitations to those alumni. They did a lot for you or really for the program um, in the past. And so feeling like they can be included in the future events is super important. So sending those invitations, getting them involved um, is super great. Um, and as well as providing hotel vouchers. So if you're able, if your budget allows, um, allowing some way for it to be easy for them to come back. Maybe they've moved really far away. So just having a place to stay, that transportation aspect of getting them to the event um, is super great and something that our, our alumni really appreciate um, and something that we plan to do every year. And this past year, we had a special opportunity to give hospital tours to the weekend of main event for those alumni that um, graduated during the years of COVID and maybe didn't ever get to go into our hospital. 
for the ones that were a part of the old hospital and maybe haven't seen new renovations or just want to see, you know, what's currently happening in the hospital because they've moved away. And so this is something that we hope to do every year and really get the alumni engaged with the hospital and with the child life specialist um, that weekend of main event. And then maybe they'll send something to some of their fellow alumni friends um, to just, you know, reminisce on those past days and show that what they started before is still um, making an impact today um, within Dance Marathon. All right, everyone. So that is the end of our presentation. We thank you so much. We really do believe that alumni engagement is super important and it's been really beneficial for us, especially this past year with our milestone year. But of course, we're continuing those practices as we head into this next one. And so this would be our time for Q&A. Um, but thank you all so much. Thank you, guys.